toilet on a plinth, right? You're probably wondering. And um, today I want to talk about learning from the toilet, but the toilet can't talk, so I'm going to do the talking. This is our technology. But I want you to first look at the image behind me. This is the state of the art sewage works from right here in the UK. And that huge mass of water is being treated in a fantastic technology. All the water that we use in cities and in industry and also the water that runs through gutters on the street ends up at these giant sewage works which do an incredibly energy intensive process to separate it all back out again and send drinking water back to people's homes and all the other places it needs to go. Somebody told me once that the water we drink in London has probably been through the kidneys of seven people. <laughs> we're actually lucky in a way. Um, in fact, we're very lucky to have this, this infrastructure supporting our toilets. And we don't often think about it being at the other end. And in fact, we flush about 30% of that water that comes back. So of our domestic water that we use, 30% of it, we flush it straight back down the toilet again with the deposits that we put in. So we turn it into polluted water and send it right back to these very hard-working plants. And it's not a great system, and it's also becoming less and less sustainable in cities where water is becoming more scarce. If you think about a place like Los Angeles, I read an article in the New York Times just a week ago about people in California who don't have water supply anymore. So this is a problem. Um, and then here's another end of the sanitation spectrum. Um, this is photos from Antananarivo, Madagascar. It's the capital city where there isn't any sewage infrastructure at all. And you can see some kind of brownish yellow water going into this canal. There's a toilet about six meters away. It's a little public toilet that was built with, an, with a septic tank by an NGO. And um, the septic tank is overloaded because there's so much human waste going through it and there's actually not enough water to use to flush the toilets. So the system's off kilter and it's just churning raw sewage into the canal. But this is actually like a huge problem globally. There's two and a half billion people without sanitation and that's about 40% of the population. So as a result, about 4,000 people die every day from waterborne illnesses, mostly children. It's a challenging and dangerous issue that we have to deal with and we need new technologies. We need new technologies for toilets all over the world. So coming back to this toilet and one of the things that it has to say, because I think we can learn about the sanitation challenge by, um, we, we can learn about life in general by thinking about how to face the sanitation challenge. And the first point is to deal with our shit. And the way this toilet deals with its shit is it packages human waste in biodegradable polymer film for anaerobic digestion. So I'll talk you through that one more time. You use the toilet, you operate the mechanism, it carries your waste down through the toilet so that you get a clean bowl every time. It's totally odorless, fantastic experience. And then the biodegradable polymer film and the waste are in a cartridge which gets emptied periodically and treated in an anaerobic digester to produce energy natural gas. Energy is the intrinsic antidote to human waste because it's clean, it's odorless, and it's extremely useful. So this is a great opportunity, and it's one that we should be doing more. People have to see it to believe it. So when we built the first system in Madagascar, we made biogas tea to share with the community. On the other side of the wall is a toilet which produced the energy to make the tea. So this is real. And um, sometimes we joke in the waterless toilet business, there's no such thing as sinkers and floaters, only deposits. <laughs> We're rolling out the technology in the UK as well. The second lesson of this toilet is to try it. Get your hands dirty. If you're designing something, you need to make sure it works for you first. And that's especially true with a toilet. So when we built our system in London, we use the toilet prototypes from the very start, and that's with the real stuff. And you have to get down and dirty, you have to be humble in your approach to design. <laughs> and we built an anaerobic digester, and we fed it with human waste, and we got our first biogas, and it was actually really thrilling. 
So these are two of my colleagues at our office here in Brixton, looking at one of the toilets that we sent to Madagascar earlier this year, where we're doing a whole rollout and pilot, which we're also going to be rolling out the toilet at events and festivals more in the coming year, so you guys should come check it out. Um, but I love this photo because they look like proud parents. <laughs> and it's the pride that you get when you've dealt with your shit and when you've gotten your hands really dirty. So lastly, I think the final lesson is you can also make it look fabulous. You can make it shit hot, even if it's a toilet. Thank you.